Hello everyone and welcome to the shop. So today we're going to be talking about the lost vault of Jesse James. So this is a 3D printed puzzle box that we're bringing to market and uh, you can actually see the design here on Fusion and uh, Ben Oxenford uh, has been helping me prototype this box and get it ready for you guys. We're working hard to get our first few boxes up and ready and so we just want to talk a little bit about what it was like building it. So like this part, this is just one of the components here and so if you can see this. So this is like one print and you print just from this level up and then you change filaments to change to this color, right? Like at the last step. And maybe this would illustrate it. So right here we're testing out different finishing techniques and mm -hmm. different um, types of filament. So this is the copper and this is the brass. And, um, but there were some you know, challenges as far as how to take the the model and the idea of the, um, the safe and turn it into something that actually comes out on a 3D printer. Uh -huh. So uh, this is a this is a kind of a fun one because um, the door itself was um, challenging in that it has texture on both both sides. Right. So we've got a lot going on on this side with the gear mechanisms and mm -hmm. and everything. And on this side, there's a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. So we ended up splitting that into two different parts. And actually okay. there were some issues with the, the hinges and we needed to strengthen those. So we split the hinges out into separate parts too, so we can print those at a different orientation. So what I like though, you know, he just mentioned we're testing out this copper filament for the, you know, the detail on top so we have the contrast but then it also tarnishes and uh, I guess rust is a bad word but like you know the metal rust but the the copper I guess just patinas and it's a nice contrast and it prints it a little bit better than the brass filled filament so we think we're going with that but it's pretty you know like figuring out that what parts go with what you know like what to print it must have been tough because you know there's so many as you said there's so many seams here and there's so many different parts you know it's like which orientation is best so like i think you print the the sides here vertically so how did you yeah. figure how did you go with that at one point i realized you know there's, there's the holes for these brass bars mm -hmm. and um you know the best orientation for those is is going to be with the the wall vertically right and then I can fit a couple of them onto the, the build plate at the same time if I if I do this but then they're gonna be wobbly they're gonna fall over before they get to the top printing so I mm -hmm. kind of connect to the left wall and the right wall together as they print um, by a thin edge of plastic and then when we're done we just break it apart so just kind of trial and error <laughs> yeah a little bit doing it lots of times and trying to think through the process so right now so we're printing on uh, Prusa printers kind of like this uh, we might end up using this one for production if we get like the filament changing because obviously when we're printing something like this we want to change filament halfway through so we can actually get an attachment that will pause the print take one piece of filament out load a different color filament and continue printing so that we can have a piece that looks like this in the end but you know we haven't really reached that stage yet so we're still yeah. kind of up in the air like how much of a burden that will be yeah 
It actually works out okay <clears throat> with this particular part because the color change happens and we start with the, the one layer and then the print pauses and we can manually change it but it would be nice if it automatically would change mm -hmm. the filaments. Mm -hmm. And then when it's automatically changing you can actually integrate the different types of filament into different parts of the model so that would give flexibility but I'm going to talk about the model a little bit and how how it, um, it's kind of uh, broken up into parts to make it manufacturable, I guess you could say. You start on the bottom and notice it has these feet down here and they kind of, um, they, they look nice, but you can't just print the feet like that. So we actually we split the, the feet off the bottom and then glue them back up underneath. And by the way, the super glue works really well to hold these pieces together, even better than the actual 3D print material itself. So sometimes I'm super gluing pieces together and try to pull it apart. And yeah, <laughs> actually, the, the, that's um, a good problem to have. Though. Yeah, you know, you don't want it to be a weak glue joint. So it's nice that it. It's very yeah. It's it's amazing how well it works and how fast it sets. Originally, we had casters down here, yeah. and you printed, uh, you know, a sample set of like caster wheels because some yeah. safes are on wheels. Yeah, but it was just made it tall and kind of top heavy, and it didn't really add that much. Yeah, and I think that was a good point. These are these are nice, yeah. nice feet. They just kind of blend in and add a little character to it. Yep. Um, let's see. So some other features. So we've got these seams on along the top, especially, and there's seams all over where the different parts connect. But one of the features of the puzzle is we don't want a, um, a puzzle solver to know exactly what pieces are moving and what pieces are stationary. Mm -hmm. So we kind of added these artificial seams, uh, but it also kind of blends in with the decor of the model because if you're right. building a safe, they would put the metal pieces together too. Right, and you can't just print the whole thing solid. Like we want there to be divisions, you know, <laughs> where you're printing different parts anyway. So that uh, blends better, as you say, and you know, there's got to be some seam, so you can't just make it like, okay, well, we had to put a seam there because that's the way it's manufactured. It's like, okay, let's add to the style and the... yeah, yeah. I think it, I think it added to the the model. I love it when there's like some problem to solve in building it, mm -hmm. and it also adds to the actual puzzle itself. Mm -hmm. Like when you solve one problem, it actually adds to it and that includes yeah. these like decor across the top and you you figure out how to make it better you know for the sake of the problem that you have to solve yeah and it works out yeah so there's some interesting things in here and it's it's uh it was fun to make and, and i'm sure it's going to be fun to solve too we hope <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i think it i i really think people will have fun with it yeah so we went through and um tried to 3d print the handle but with the shape of it and just the force that is required when you're pulling it, mm -hmm. um, and the gears and such, that particular part wasn't working very well. We tried several different orientations of the printing and um, just with the two directions it goes. Yeah, I mean, the brass is obviously like, almost like you would find on a real safe, you know, manufactured quite well. You know, the plastic definitely worked and it looked okay, but we're just kind of worried that somebody who's who thinks they've solved it before they have or just wants to try and force it open is actually going to break the part so yeah. that's why we ended up going with the brass which which is what we're prototyping here these are two different pieces that josh makes on the lathe here and then we're going to drill it and do like a morse taper fit so it holds it in place and then it'll be solid brass and it just feels much better feels like a real safe. Some other things we did to improve the feel of it after some prototyping was this um, this bearing here. So I really like the bearing. So when you've got the dial in the front, um, it has a, a nice bearing. With, it makes it super smooth when you're turning the dial and there's gonna be a bearing here in the, um, the handle. This one doesn't have it, so it's a little wobbly. I think those are nice additions. Makes it a little more quality yeah. feel so the other thing is that we're this this i mean typically like 3d printed puzzles would be quite light but we're adding plaster into this one actually since you know with a typical 3d printed part it's going to be 
pretty light because it's mostly empty, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So just the outside is printed and just enough of the inside is printed that, that uh, fills the space. But mm -hmm. with this with this iron filament that we're using, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's expensive, but it's also yeah. dense and it's... Um, yeah, that helps. And it actually has a nice weight to it, even without the plaster. Oh, but yeah, yeah I, did, I did put a little plaster in this one and you can actually see there's, I drilled a few holes in this one just to, cause I actually forgot to, <laughs> mm -hmm. forgot to put the um, plaster in before I, I glued the face on, but we're gonna drill little holes in and, mm -hmm. um, and just squirt a little mm -hmm. uh, plaster of Paris in, to fill in the voids inside. And then, but just do it in places where you would never see the hole. Like in this case, the other one. So these two faces would go together. So so it's nobody's gonna see it if if the holes are on the inside of that, and then we cover it up with this. Hmm. So it's just a little a little extra. Uh huh. But I think it's nice that it's gonna be a weighted feel. Yeah, um, I really like it too. You yeah. know, you open it and with when the hinges are nice and sturdy. And you can kind of feel the weight of the door, you know, all of a sudden you're like, is it, is it solid metal yeah. or is it? <laughs> yeah. So it has a solid or it has a metal outside and then the weight of it is almost like metal. So yeah, it really feels nice. And then the plaster is nice and white. So, you know, when, if you were to cut it open, you'd think it'd be like an old asbestos filled <laughs> safe. So then it's yeah. authentic in that one too. Except there's no asbestos use in anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call it a safe. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. So that's just kind of a small look at like what's gone into the printing for this box. And we'll be sure to release more videos um, on building the box. And, you know, we haven't even touched on the laser cutting and stuff. So we'll have more content coming out, but be sure to let us know what you guys would like to see as we build this box. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yep. See you later. Bye-bye.